Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony and I'm building my Armatech M26 Persian tank. And today I've just received the delivery of, uh, well, the first of the option packs. Um, this time it's just the motion pack and I've gone, also gone for the lighting pack because um, the next stage of the build for me is installing the lights. Um, and, you know, I want to get the cabling in while I'm installing the lights and I also want to try and get the motors installed. I probably won't bench test them because I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that, that I'm, uh, they Armatech do their own testing beforehand. So I'm going to be taking a slight risk uh, once I've unboxed this, in installing the motors, hoping that they do work and there's no problems later on down the line. But I'm pretty confident it'll be fine. Um, I'm just not ready yet. I haven't got the batteries, I haven't got the radio gear. I just want to get the motors installed because they're big, chunky, heavy things. And with the mantle that's installed over the hull, I think it's be really difficult to access. Um, like, you know, unlike the Tiger, where the, f the whole top comes off so you can get full access to the hull. Persian's not like that. So um, I'm hoping I'm doing the right thing. Anyway, in a moment, um, I will unbox this. Um, we'll get everything out. I'll go through it with you. Um, and then we'll put everything away, apart from the bits I want to use to build the, the rest of, or start the hole, the top of the hole section. And then um, we'll carry on with the build. So I'm going to reset the camera and uh, we'll get stuck in. Right, so let's, uh, let's get started. It's like Christmas all over again. Now, I'm hoping, well, I hope it's in here because I've ordered it, that the lighting kit is in here and it's obvious, it's obvious where it is, again, the amount of packing peanuts these guys put in these boxes is incredible, so I'll just bend that over so you can see, I'm also hoping that the battery tray's in here. The battery tray which is what goes over covers the torsion bars um, and there we go look <laughs> the very first thing the battery tray bosh so i'm going to be putting this in as well because um again it's a it's not a massive piece it's smaller than the tiger but um it's nonetheless it's going to be tricky so um as you notice i've actually taken my persian off the workbench it's on its uh, table jack now um so I think it's at this stage where I'll need to adjust the height of it um, occasionally to be able to work on different parts of the tank, especially if I'm working inside the hull. Um, and I'll be able to jack it right up to be able to get underneath and hold underneath here for the fixings. But um, there, there should be some standoffs that um, come with this as well. But we'll we'll cra carry on and see what else we find. So as the usual, I'll go. So this is the the ring gear. This is what drives the turret round. Um, won't be using that just yet and aha, the all important instructions um, I will be needing these yes this is very comprehensive um, <clears throat> and then we're going to start pulling these out so these are the the motion module packs themselves all the electronics it's not the full kit yet but I've still got to get the um, the recoil and the sound and smoke packs but I'm kind of holding off for a little bit because um, I'm hoping um, that they get around to developing the, the revised uh, smoke pack and recoil for the Persian, which are speeds apparently speeds up the the recoil, um, and I believe that they're going to try and get some smoke coming out of the barrel, which will be incredible. So I'm not in a rush to get those. I'd rather give Armatech a bit more time, and that's the lighting pack. So we're going to need that. That's going to be something we're going to need today. And this is the another motion pack. This is motion pack module B. Um, again, I'm not sure I'm going to be putting these in at this stage. And then we've got a bag of, oh, this looks like the standoffs and various other pieces that we will need. Not today, but in the fullness of time. So I'll pop those over there. This won't take long at all. And this is, what is this now? That's oh, the power module. Again, I may not put that in just yet because I think there's going to be enough room for me to uh, access the hole once the mantle's on to even put these in. So I won't be doing anything. I'll keep those safely wrapped up for now. And then we have slip ring bracket, whatever that is. I have no idea, but we'll find out in the fullness of time. And then we've got the, looks like the motors. These are the main drive motors. And they're heavy, heavy, heavy things. So this is what I want to put into the tank now ahead of the, putting the mantle on so they're in and out of the way. So definitely going to be 
looking to install those in the very very near future then we have some wiring looms um, and these are all pretty much labelled up um, plug and play type thing I'm going to take a very clever and very helpful when it comes to that well they certainly used to be I'm not sure at the moment I can't see any labels on these but we'll since we'll find out in the fullness of time oh there is um, and there's obviously the, the turret drive in here as well so we'll pop that away we don't need that just yet and this looks like the gun gun elevator so again I'm going to keep all these wrapped up don't need these for now and just going to go through this box of bits and of packing peanuts and that is it and that's what uh, that's what your money gets you all the electronics all the rest of it so I'm pleased these have arrived I'm hoping that I've done the right thing and gone ahead and ordered these um, so what we do now is I'm going to clear this away pack all the bits I don't need away out of the way so we can crack on and then um, I'll reposition the camera around to where the tank is currently situated and we'll start looking at uh, installing the lights so the first thing I'm gonna install is the battery tray and it always um, confuses me that really the battery tray although it doesn't it isn't required for the kit I don't know anybody would buy one of these tanks without the motion packs um, because it, I guess you could have a static build but anyway I'd have thought that the battery tray would have been delivered as part of the first delivery because obviously once you've assembled the hull and you've got the wheels on and I mean imagine if you had had all the kit inside this and then you buy the option packs then you realize the battery tray's got to go in it's a nightmare to get underneath this this hole here um so i've got what i've got here is i've got my table jack uh it's elevated not full but it's elevated so it's a comfortable height for me to work on then i've got my motorcycle jack underneath i've adapted this uh, table jack with another pit if you like and made out of plywood and i've elevated it as far as i want to at this stage now i can get to because of the jacks in the middle underneath this i can get to the two flanking um fixings if you like for the standoffs um but the middle ones i'm gonna to have to tilt this up and we'll try and do that without falling over or doing something stupid so i've got um so i don't know if you're going to be able to see this in the camera but i'm going to now come underneath i've got nice clear access from underneath present the fixing in i don't think you can probably see that but um you will definitely see it when we come to the other end and then i'm just gonna put a bit of thread locker on then I'm going to spin on the um, standoff. Now, I can get an Allen key underneath this, but I don't think you're going to need it because the thread locker will do its job. So that's those two in. I've already done this one down here, and I'm going to go and do this side here. So same deal, because the tank is elevated on this little motorcycle jack. I can pop that underneath that. Bit of thread locker on there. And then just put that on, hand tight, and that um, hand tight, but it's nice and tight, it's not going to go anywhere. Then we've got the two in the middle, which are important, we need to make sure that they go in. So I'm going to try and do this without um, make, having a disaster. So I'm just going to tilt this ever so slightly so I can get underneath. There we go. Bit of thread locker. I've got my standoff. And this is heavy now, this. So if you're, if you're struggling a little bit, you may want to get someone to help you do this bit. So that's, that's that side done. I'm going to do the other side. In fact, what I might do is tilt this up this way. that's that imagine trying to do this when the tank is fully built impossible anyway that's it then we have our battery tray
and you can put this in now at this stage because it's not going to it's not going to interfere with anything else and i'd say definitely get it in at this stage because once everything else is on the tank it's going to be nigh on impossible to do what we've just done and it sits with the lips on the side and that just stops the batteries from sliding when um, when you eventually get the batteries and then we'll just get the right excuse me for a minute i'm out of camera get the right alum fixing or tool so i'll do and then we can get this in and before i did this what i did is i got the air hose and i gave the whole of the hole a bit of a blast because obviously where i've been working on grinding and cutting out the sides of the tank it's a bit of swarf in there so i know that the inside is all cleaned and i'm not priming the inside of the hole i mean a few people have said why i'm not doing that but i'm not doing that because I'm going to be what's known as a fair weather tanker. Um, I know things can oxidise and everything else, but uh, I, you know, the tiger's now, well, it's come up to his first birthday actually. Um, and I've driven that for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, and I'm in and out of the, the hole doing adjustments because things like the turret, for instance, um, that will work itself a little bit loose. So you have occasionally need to take everything off and just tighten everything up. Um, and everything inside is as, as it was built. So nothing's oxidized, everything's fine. Um, and uh, so that's why I'm not, I'm not priming the inside. I actually quite like the raw look of the inside. I like the raw look of the tanks anyway. Some people buy these tanks and don't paint them. I quite like the look of that. But um, you know, I, want it to, I want it to look a little bit like, you know, more realistic. Um, and obviously since the last time uh, my last session where we pa I painted all the um, the mud guards and the bins I've gone on and actually done a bit of weathering on that and I'm really pleased and uh, I will show you that in the fullness of time and I did it as a bit of a practice before I attempt to do anything on the main tank so I'm really pleased how that's come out um, and if the rest of the tank looks as good when I've done the same when I weather all the wheels and the main hull I'll be really pleased I even went ahead and um, <laughs> I've got uh, some of my little dragon figures with their boots and dipped the sole of the boot in a bit of watered down acrylic paint and so it's got some footprints on the mud guards and I thought it was a bit, you know, uh, cheesy but actually it looks really good. So, so that's that. The next thing we're going to do now is, now that this battery tray's in, just wipe the excess of that off, will be to go on and start looking at the, the lights on the front of the tank here. Um, and I've had a quick look and there is a it's like an offset hole not quite sure how the cable's going to pass through that but we'll uh, we'll look at that in the fullness of time but we'll be on to that momentarily so um, I'll get the camera reset and um, I'll um, we'll, we'll get cracking right so I've assembled the left and the right hand uh, lights and you can see that in the camera um, very straightforward just need to be super glued a um, little bit of cleaning up on some of these just to get make sure everything and again before you do anything make sure you test everything fits first um, before you start applying glue because some of these are a bit tight so the, the holes need to be cleaned out and everything else so so the lights are assembled um, and the lighting loom is here so really the the only way I can think of getting these lights installed because there's quite a difficult little hole in the tank is to actually undo the lighting loom here and by the way I'm actually going to do a bit of welding because I'm also going to do these lifting cleats as well and I'll show you um, what I'm going to do with that so what we'll probably do is do that first because I've got the mini put ready um, apologies so I'm going to remove I'm going to set the camera up I'll come back and we'll talk about the lights in a moment and the reason why I'm doing these right now these lifting hooks is to um, I want to get the weld around them because once the lights are in place I think it's gonna be quite difficult so bear with me I'm gonna set the camera up so you can see what I'm doing here and then we'll come back and do the lights so ahead of doing the lights um, which I'll come back to in a moment I, I've actually assembled the lights and I'll show you that in a moment 
Um, I was looking at uh, sort of other parts of the tank that I'm going to have to go on and build. And then once the light's installed on these two, they're sort of stanchions there and there, these lifting hooks will go in here. And I want to do some milliput welding around these. And I just thought I'll put the hooks in first um, uh, before I do the lights because I think the lights uh, will get in the way. So a couple of things. So these hooks here, they get installed so they point upwards like that. Now, because of the way these are made, there's there's not a sh there's not the, the detail around this is actually there's 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 it's not sharp enough so it, it doesn't sit in here correctly so it just it'll as you can see it wobbles about um now i don't want to affect this because it's i think it's a cast piece i don't want to do anything with that but what i am going to do is i'm going to use a countersunk piece a uh, drill head like this and just open up the hole and hopefully That that will take up. That will allow me, hopefully, that this will sit flush. And yes, that's much better. Don't worry about damaging this because this is all going to be painted again anyway. So now all that needs to be done is that just needs to be locked tight in. Simple as that. enough around these little studs bit on there I'm not, I'm not a big believer of bonding things to paint but um, and making sure that these are pointed up and they are so that's just gonna sit there just make sure it's straight and it is and that'll just sit there and then we'll do the other side just test fit that to make sure that that sits in there nicely and it does and then what we'll do is we'll get the milli put out in a minute and do that. One of the things which I'll show you in a minute is with the, excuse me, come around this side. I think the casting on this tank doesn't help, but that glue should grab that in a moment so one of the things you've got to do with the lights is a stud that goes in here which helps locate the light fitting and there's a hole here and I'll show you that so there's a hole here on the inside is where the cable passes through and then this is the stud now I don't know if you can see on the camera I actually had to open that up a little bit just because the, the, the little um, pin that goes in the back of the light fitting uh, is a bit too tight for this because the way it's cast I guess um, so I just opened it up and then out fits nice and snug and I will be gluing that in so they ask you to lock tight that into that and into that now they show you putting into the tank first but I've actually put it on the light they may have made a mistake with that but we'll, we'll time will tell but I think it's better to put it in the light first um, and um, and then what I'm going to do is I will obviously do a bit of mock welding around this as well but the thing is the lighting loom that they give you has got a bulb on the end of it and there's no way that's going to pass through so you're going to have to go around and pass the cable through and pull the bulb down into where the light is itself which I'll show you in a moment now these should be pretty much ready to go we won't do that I think we will actually because I've done the milliput already don't want that to go off and hard so I'm going to hopefully with my newfound welding skills I can make this look pretty good he says Pop that over that and just get a little bit of water I think just to help that And then we go, try and get this, mimic the weld. So there's quite a lot of work on this glacier plate. It's incredible really to think about. It's not, it doesn't seem like it, but there's, there's a lot of detail that goes on to it. And obviously this is quite an important part 
of the tank and how the tank's going to look when it's finished. So it's important to get these things right. Look at me welding away like that. Something I wouldn't have done before, but now I feel fairly confident. And when that goes off, that'll be just about right. Like I said before when I was trying this, if you've never done this before, don't be scared of it, because it is actually quite straightforward and the difference is incredible. So when that's painted, that will look really, really smart. And I think, and the reason why I'm glad I've done these before the lights, because imagine if the light's standing off here, or whatever, yeah, standing off here. Um, that's actually something interesting. I'll have to think about that and uh, see how that works. But anyway, yeah, when it's standing off here, it will, I'm just worried about the angle, but it's, it's got an angle on the light. So I'm thinking about, does it really come out like that straight, but it will actually end up being upright like that. So forget all that. I'm just blabbering away as usual. Um, but if the light was here, how, you know, I, I wanted to try and get the tool around. Now we'll have some difficulty with the light, but probably easier because I've got this angle to work with, whereas on here, no. So that's that. And now we'll just go and do the other one. Let's come out of the way. It really will set this tank off. And as I said before, I really want to try and step up the detailing on this. Because um, when I built the Tiger, I was you know, really, really sort of worried about doing anything. I was more concerned about just getting the build correct. And then afterwards sort of thought, well, um, perhaps I should have done something like that. But, you know, um, I, quite, I really like the way the Tiger looks. Um, and this is going to have a different kind of look and feel around the, you know, well, the Persian will have a different look and feel, a lot more detail. And I'm glad that it's almost like a journey of development. So let's just start. I really think that, you know, like I said before, this, this front plate is so detailed, there's so much work and the machine gun um one thing i didn't get and i'm kicking myself now um because while i mean by the time you're watching this armatech should be back i guess but right now they're off on their summer break and i didn't not i did not order the machine gun pack which would be where the servo and everything else attaches and the chassis for the server servo will keep this um rigid uh, so may not be able to install the machine gun as part of this exercise, but we'll have a look and see how far we can get. It's coming along all right, I think. Again, if you're an expert at this and you're watching this, yeah, don't judge me, I'm still learning. Still getting used to how this all comes together. But I am reasonably happy with it. And I know I'm probably doing things out of sequence, but it kind of makes sense to me. There we go. And I'm pretty happy with that. Don't forget, wheel welding's not that tidy either. So, perfect. Okay. So that's that. That's that. They're both on. Now we'll go back and um, have a look at the lights. So I've assembled the lights, as you can see, left and right hand. Reasonably straightforward, just it's all about gluing it all together, making sure all the holes are cleaned up so everything fits. Again, test fit everything. That's the pin I talked about earlier, which will go into the main glacier plate. Um, and uh, just make sure everything is clean and tidy um, before you glue it so that it fits and test fit it to make sure everything fits because as soon as you put some glue on it and it doesn't fit it becomes a bit of a nightmare but um, that's just a hopefully a helpful tip now so we've got these lights this is part of the lighting loom here you have front and reverse or forward lights sorry forward and, rever and rear lights um, and it's all kind of clipped together all very easily you've got two red lights for the rear nice long loom to give you plenty of space in there and then you have you've got your connector which i've just disconnected for now from this 
so I've got this separately I don't need that at the moment so now I've got my front lights and you can see that these hardwired which is great but if you were to try and put that through that that's not going to happen is it so the only way I can think of doing this and is to actually undo make a note that this is obviously black and red sounds really stupid but um, I'm going to have to undo both of these because they're wired together like that and then we'll take one of them and just see if I can get this to to work I'm probably going to just what twist those together for now and then I'm going to hopefully get this to feed through he says and there we go it pulls that through there keep pulling that through push and pull you can and they've got the sleeve that might be a problem but let's see what happens it's just this sleeve is now just don't do that No, that's not going to want to go through there, so I think we'll be quite. Just see if I can push it. And here we go, it's going in ever so slowly. But it is a bit of encouragement. And then that should just sit in the center of that. And when that gets powered up, and we'll probably try and power it up in a minute just to see if it works. Um, <clears throat> And that'll be, that'll work fine when we put the lens on it um obviously we'll mask that off and we'll feed the cables through into the tank and i'll reconnect that up so hopefully that was um interesting i'll probably do the other one as well while we're on camera so it's again it's through feed this through Comes through like that. Let me just try and fit that. Get that to pop itself into that hole. There you go. And that's in there now, like that. And we'll just feed that through the tank in a moment. So I'll go and do that. Um, well. Well, I'll reset the camera and we'll, we'll, we'll show you how we do that. All right, so that's the right-hand light installed. Um, I'll just do the left-hand light with you guys. So I've twisted the... Well, this twisted and come apart, but... Again, camera's on. It all goes wonky. So I've twisted the wires together. Um, this is a bit... They just will not stick together, look. Sorry, guys. Anyway, that's how it happens with the camera so that's going to go in that hole and then we're going to try and push that through I'm just going to pop that on there like that for a moment let's see if I can okay yeah probably put a bit of a bend in that Always fiddly when the camera's on. Okay, that's one of them in. There's the other one. All right, so that's them through. Before we glue that, we'll just make sure that it fits and it does. I'll just put a little bit of lock tight on that now. I've, um, as you can see, I've already glued the little lenses on. They will have to be masked off. 
when it comes to painting, but I'm not worried about that just yet. Uh, that goes in there like that. And that looks pretty straight to me. Let me see. And you can see, um, that's what I mean about this light being in the way of the, the welding. So that's it, that's that. Now I just want to test them to make sure that they're still working because we have messed around with them a bit. So I've got a little five amp battery. I'm just going to test this to make sure that they're on or they're working. This is awkward as well. I'll tell you what we do, bring them up there. Hold that on there. And that's it, that's working, lovely. We'll do the same with this. Last thing you wanna do is, um, you know, you're pushing and pulling cables around. Uh, it's just, Hold that on that and that lights working as well so that's the lights installed we know they're working I'm just going to reconnect up the uh, the leads onto the lighting loom and then we'll carry on to the next pit right so I was going to carry on and do some more work on the front uh, glacier plate but um, I suddenly realized when I was pulling this wiring loom over that there's backlights as well, rear lights. And once the uh, motors are in, I'm not gonna be able to get to this. And also, um, you have to drill a hole for these. There's no instructions for this, so I'm not sure why Armatech wouldn't tell us to do that. But um, I've worked out that there's another lifting cleat to go here. That's all well and good. Um, and there's this hole in the middle, which actually doesn't go all the way through, but there's a recess in the back of this plate here. Um, that allows you to take the drill and to take it through. Uh, so allow, so I'm, I'm gonna do that. So I've assembled, I've done the other side already. I've assembled uh, the two little lights. I just think it's another one of these sort of jobs that you should do while you can, but it shows it right at the end of the build. So I'm just gonna put a pilot hole through there first. It's beyond me why this wouldn't have been mentioned in the instructions. I, I, I certainly can't see them. I might have missed it, so apologies if I've missed them. I just want to make sure that the little light, this tiny little thing here, fits in there. And it does. I also want to make sure that this light passes through into it, and it does. So all that needs to be done then is just a little bit of super glue and lock tight. sure that's pretty much aligned and it is um, I'm not an advocate of super gluing cables but I'm just gonna put a little dab on here so I don't want that to come out once it's in and that's it there's no lens or anything as far as I can see to go over those so that's the two rear lights installed way ahead of when it says to do it in the instructions um, and what we'll do is we'll just leave those cables that's just popped out. <laughs> All the reason to put a bit of super glue on that. And we'll just leave those cables inside the, the tank. It's not going to come to any harm whatsoever. 
Um, so now I'm glad I've done that. Um, we'll carry on uh, doing a bit more detailing on the, the front hull section. So uh, I just thought that might be helpful to you. So if you, you are building one of these tanks, um, bear in mind that there are things that you're going to have to do ahead of the instructions. Um, that's why it's all, all very important I can see some damage on this, but it doesn't really matter because it's all going to be pre-painted anyway. Um, and I'm glad these are in and, you know, it just pays dividend to, to sort of to plan ahead. Um, and especially, and if you can afford to do it, definitely get the lighting pack and the, the motion pack ahead of doing any more build once you got to this stage. Uh, because I think if you don't and you carry on building, um, it'll become really difficult. So hopefully that's of, um, of use and helpful. Uh, we'll crack on with a little bit more detailing on the front. Right, so we're back to the front again. Um, so we've got these two, I believe, possibly tow hooks to go here. Um, and we've got the two hatches of which I've put one in already and a couple of the others here and the other hatch here and then and I will not be doing the machine gun today because I should have ordered the machine gun kit if you like so it can keep it rigid um, so that'll have to wait for another day I'll put these two tow hooks on we'll do a bit of milliput welding around those and uh, get this done and then that'll be uh, the session over for today so we'll crack on so what I've got now is we've got these two tow hooks that go into position here and they are fixed with a an m38 mil fixing so what we'll do is it just put a thread locker in the hole Do them up too tight until you've got the other one in. That's it. Nice and simple. I do enjoy this part of the build because it's not monotonous, it's not repetitive as such, um, and it slowly starts bring, bringing a detail to the tank that brings it to life effectively. So, this is a really enjoyable part of the build today um, you know even doing things like the light you know I'm pleased that we did that and the last one so that's that so we will do a bit of welding around these to finish those off and then the next thing is we've got this hatch. Now I've gone ahead and I've done, I've fixed this in already. Now, interestingly, on the instructions, it shows that these nuts are sort of further down here and the, you, you lock them off with thread locker at the bottom. And I guess that's because you want to be able to pick this up and rotate the periscope. Well, I'm not bothered about that. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to have them as rigid as, as, as I've got them in here. So what I'm probably going to do is once I've got these fixed and the, and the thread locker's gone off, I will get my little Dremel and I'll t cut these off because uh, I'm, I'm not bothered about them spinning or, or whatever. So um, so what we'll do now is we'll just put the hinge, main hinge bracket on. So again, we'll just put a bit of, what I'll do is I'll come around, bring everything I need. Hammer. And two fixings try not to get in the way of the camera doing this of course I miss I forget the thing that I, I need the most the actual tool so that goes on there another 8mm countersunk M3 don't do it up too tight just yet of course when all this is on I'll just mask off the wheels um, and uh, paint the whole thing like I did with the tiger and that 
if this goes as well as the last one it'll be a mirror pretty really brilliant um, and then this pin just goes in I'm just checking it there's nothing stopping it and there isn't no swarf or anything no no it's just tight course this being on the camera is going to be awkward oh no that's gone on that's gone in all right let's get something to lift that up with oh, I see it's starting to go in there just gently tapping that. Now, all I all I do now is I'll just put a little bit of thread locker on this section here. So I want that bit to basically bond in here. So I don't want this pin travelling out. That's it. Something to wipe the excess off. And that is that. Couldn't be simpler, could it? Fits like a glove. Really, really pleased with that. Uh, so we've got these other. I think there could be vents or other periscope pieces that go on the front of the tank like so and they are fixed into position the same way with a little fixing bracket underneath so we'll try and do that this looks like it could be uh, one of the fiddlier jobs to do I don't know why they've used 16mm button fixings of these. Seems excessive to me. to lift this up a bit actually excuse me that's it yeah this is awkward say what let's do one at a time Talk amongst yourselves. Ah, oh, that's it. And that is awkward as anything, that. The first one on. Tell you what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll crack on with this um, away from camera because you'll you'll give up the, the will to live, I guess, if you carry on watching me like this. So I'm going to turn the camera off and you watch. It'll be so easy and I'll come back and we'll do a bit of welding on here. Many hours later. Okay, well, that was double awkward. Um, got there in the end, but uh, yeah, awkward. So I'm now going to just do some welding around the tow hooks here, but I'm probably going to just drop the table lift out a little bit so I can just, that's a bit better great things these right so I've already pre-mixed 
and rolled out a couple of lengths. a little bit of water on it just to help make it stick because the casting makes it difficult right here we go I actually find this very therapeutic. Strangely so. So that's about as far as I'm going to go today. I mean, I'll do a little piece of camera in a minute, but um, to sort of let you know what the plan is for the next stage. Uh, but actually, I know it doesn't seem we've done quite a lot today, but we, we have, in essence, unboxed the... Um, the option kit, just need a bit of water on that, bear with me, sorry. We've unboxed the uh, the options kit, got the lights in and working, front and back. And we've accessorised the front of, our detailed if you like, the front of this glasses plate. That's it, that's that done, happy with that. Why I didn't do this before, I don't know. But anyway, you live and learn, right? Just cut that off. Water is the key here. Not too much of it. Just keep the your modelling tool a little bit wet and damp. Stops it from sticking. Just spray got a little spray bottle of water. Just spray it onto the milliput ahead of you. And we don't saturate it because you won't be able to use it, but Let's come it together. Almost done. So that's the glassy plate done, apart from the machine gun, of course, and I told you why I haven't put that in, but um, when, it, when Armatec come back from their break, I'll, um, I'll get that delivered. Um, and then uh, we'll, I said, I'm going to work out the next stage for the build um, and I'll come back to camera um, uh, and for a sign off. And by then I would have worked out what I'm going to do for the next build. Hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you in about, uh, well, very shortly. So that's today's session over. Um, I'm quite pleased. Uh, we've received and unpacked the option packs, uh, installed the lighting loom, tested the lights. They all work. Um, and we started building up some of the detail on the front glacier plate um, and did a bit of welding. Um, it, it, you know, it's crazy how quick the time flies when you're doing something like this. But anyway, the next part of the build is going to be this front deck assembly, uh, which is this part here, which sits effectively on here. And the reason why I've gone ahead and ordered the option packs, one of the reasons is so I can get these motors installed onto the tank, tighten this back plate up, because they do tell you to keep that loose until the motors are in, um, get the motors installed, and then, then I've got on, you know, I'll have unhindered access to be able to install the motors, so then I can comfortably go on and start putting the deck together. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing that. I mean, there's some complex looking things and a little bit of monotonous uh, sort of exercises, I think, here, but uh, nonetheless, it's all part of the journey. Um, and uh, so that's me for today, uh, Tony, building another tank. Thank you so much for all the guys that continue to support me and, and send wonderful comments. Really, really chuffed with that. Love interacting with you. If you just joined my channel, please subscribe. If you like this, thumbs up, and I'll see you real soon.